Good morning, guys. It is the morning of April 25th of Dewey's 24-hour readathon. It is now just a little bit past 10 a.m. and I've been reading since a little bit before 9 a.m. And I've read about 16 pages of a prayer journal, which I have right yeah, I'm not going to show you the front of it because I'm reading it for a secret TBR video. And I really love what I've read so far. There's this awesome section where she's talking about how she finds it really easy to assent to anyone saying that faith is all like a construct of the mind, just like a psychological thing. And that's just where she's at. And she's being really honest about that. She's asking God to give people like her weapons to fight that off. She just has such an eloquent way of putting it. And this is a prayer journal. It's like not like she was doing this for a publication. So I'm loving reading it. Can't wait to actually talk about it in my secret TBR video and share it with you guys. It's really fantastic. So anyways, I'm going to go sit outside because it's beautiful. I don't know what I'm going to read yet. I do have Dune sitting here beside me in case I want to just pick that up. I think I'm going to skip breakfast so I can just focus on reading. I have some salami and cheese to make a salad for lunch. Yum. There's nothing like a salad loaded with salami and cheese and like your own homemade croutons. Man, it's the best. Okay, I'm going to go get up. I've just been laying here over an hour and reading <laughs> and praying because, you know, it's a prayer journal. <laughs> Hello guys! It is just after 3. It's like 3.15. I've been sitting out on my deck for hours lathering on the sunscreen. There's been a party going on on Instagram with all the people doing Dewey and just other people that I've been talking to and it's been so nice. Kate Howe, she's doing a live stream on Instagram tonight which is why I need to get going because I have to go for a walk and take a bath and so that after the live stream I'm ready to like make dinner and sit down and read. I do my reading at night normally and I just I have trouble focusing on reading during the day unless it's really party stuff. So I've broken my rule completely. It's out the window. I've been reading Mystery and Manners. I am taking so many notes on this. It's fantastic. It's so rich. I can't wait to film my Stay Home Rhymo video and maybe now that I'm saying it on here I'll actually get it done. Man, I need a new hat. But I can't because COVID, darn it. Anyways. Boy, it's not even that sunny right now. I don't even need it. Oh, but my hair. Well, whatever. It's a vlog. I've shared a few quotes on Twitter and it's just been so much fun talking with people. That's really more what this was going to be about for me was talking with people rather than trying to get an enormous word count. I just met, I think, Leaf by Leaf is his name through Noah, of course. I just love Noah's channel so much. I just watched his first video that he ever made of all his favorite authors. So good. His favorite author is Flannery O'Connor. I'm thinking she might be mine too. There's nobody who melds faith and writing the way she does. It's so cool. Anyway, meeting lots of cool people. Elizabeth Ann Reads, just so many cool people. Thank you so much for talking to me, guys. This has been a blast. <laughs> p.m. I really haven't gotten that much more reading done, but you know, it was such a wonderful day. I only finished one rather large essay in Flannery O'Connor's Mystery and Manners. The essay that I spent a lot of the day reading and analyzing in depth and taking notes on is called Catholic Novelists and Their Readers, and it was so good that I'm just gonna break it down for you guys because apparently I just can't, I, I knew that I couldn't speed through this. I knew that if I was gonna do a reading day. It's kind of silly to take a whole day to read an essay and break it down, but that's what I do. Welcome to my life. No, you don't know what it's like. Welcome to my life. No regrets, man. So, as you can tell, this is mostly talking to Catholic novelists and Catholic readers. And man, is it scorching. She is so feisty and I love it. Essentially, I think there are two themes in this essay and they are pretty much spelled out by the title of it. That is writers observing the world and using what they see to express mystery in their stories. Mystery through facts is a big, big theme in this whole collection really, but especially this essay. And Christian and Catholic readerships developing a taste and appreciation 
and for art. That is the other major theme in this essay. She says things that I've kind of thought but not been able to express and she just says it so well. And I think she, this applies equally as much to Christian authors and readers. So it felt very personal and very applicable to me and very uncomfortable and condemning as well, but in a good way. <laughs> She talks a lot in here about how Catholics should be developing their tastes to really appreciate art because if there's something that they couldn't be accused of when she was writing this, it's of being artistically minded. I kind of feel like things might have changed a bit since she wrote this essay because honestly there's a lot of Catholic and Christian authors of like poetry and literary fiction, at least there's a couple. Maybe there wasn't at this time, but I feel like a lot of Christians wouldn't necessarily be interested in her fiction or people who write like her. And I'm I'm totally guilty of this. I like a happy story as much as the next person. But like Flannery O'Connor is one of those authors who really did bring me into a much better appreciation of modern literature because it's often looking at the faults of mankind and it's gritty and realistic and not very happy. And when I was seeing that from the world's perspective, like in high school, I was just like, this is stupid. It's totally unrelated to my life. But once I read this, in college, I could understand it because she was criticizing Catholics, which to me was criticizing Christians. And it was so relevant and so amazing how she would bring her characters to Revelation by just essentially putting them through hell on earth, showing them the cost of the cross, that the cross is not easy, it, it costs a lot, and we can't take that for granted. Revelation comes with a big price. And a lot of other really Christian concepts, and the way she does it, it's just so disturbing that it grabbed my attention and it grabbed a lot of other people's attentions too, which is why she's so famous. She's just a fantastic author. <laughs> Art never responds to the wish to make it democratic. It is not for everybody. It is only for those who are willing to undergo the effort needed to understand it. We hear a great deal about humility being required to lower oneself so that people can understand it, but it requires an equal humility and a real love of the truth to raise oneself and by hard labor to acquire higher standards. And this is certainly the obligation of the Catholic and the Christian. And that is because we reflect the church in everything we do and those who can see clearly that our judgment is false in matters of art cannot be blamed for suspecting our judgment in matters of religion. <laughs> also a lot about how authors need to use facts and observations about the real world, realism, in order to express mystery. And I'm still having trouble understanding what she means by mystery exactly. She talks about how the mystery is revealed in the facts of life. Let me see if I can find a quote because I really wish I could understand what she meant exactly by mystery. But I always kind of feel like I'm missing something when I'm reading her stories, like she's having a conversation and it's just a little bit above me. And watching the Codex Cantina's videos sometimes kind of pulls that out for me, something that I might have missed if I was just reading it on my own. So I'm sure it has something to do with metaphor, symbolism, and imagery, and those are things that I'm not good at that I feel like modern literature employs quite a lot to get their message across. And it just always goes over my head. I'm hoping I'll get better at understanding that. Okay, a quote about mystery. Fiction doesn't give us instant answers. It leaves us with a renewed sense of mystery. Describe a fact, reveal a mystery. That's the goal for a piece of fiction. So if anybody knows what she means by mystery, it's all over this book. It's not the only place where she mentions mystery. It's in the title. I just... <sighs> Please tell me if you know what she's talking about. I'm so, maybe it'll talk more about it in the last two essays. I wish I could have just finished this book today, but no, I couldn't. So I'm making this video before I finished it. Maybe I'll understand it after finishing the essays. I don't know. The main concern of the fiction writer is with mystery as it is incarnated in human life. What mystery, Flannery? What mystery are you speaking of? <laughs> to say, great essay, lots of great stuff in it. Now the question is what to do now that I'm not going to be able to sleep for like three hours from any time I decide to stop working. And I'm probably going to be watching Call the Midwife because Garrett and also Kristen from Seeking Stories both recommended that to me and I had seen the first season before. So I figure I can probably watch that and relax because I've seen it and read it. By the way, it's a great book. If you haven't read that book, wow. I've only read the first one. I'm just going to be probably a couple hours of that and maybe 
maybe an hour of reading some children's book before I can go to sleep. But before that point, what do I want to do? Do I want to read Dune? Do I want to edit this vlog? We shall see. There's still several hours left in the readathon. However, hmm, I do need some sleep. I will probably be reading more between now and 5 a.m. For me, it started at 5 a.m. I didn't start at 5 a.m. I started at like 9.45. Good night. Hey guys, it is now the afternoon of April 26th and I just wanted to give my final update for the reading that I did last night before 5 a.m. And the totals. Last night, I finished up The Silmarillion. I had only a few more pages left in this and I thought this is the perfect time to just get through it. Really just needed to sit down and do it. I was having trouble focusing on it because it's like a, at the very end, it's like a rehashing of The Lord of the Rings, which I've read many, many times and I love, but a rehash is just like reading a plot outline. <laughs> but even though this did take me, hmm, since somewhere in January, I've been working on this, there were periods where I was reading it nonstop. And then there were periods where I just could not focus on it. And I'm so glad that I finished this. I really hope that I will get a chance to review this a dedicated review for the Lord of the Readathon 2020 folks because this was wonderful and I think if you really enjoy Lord of the Rings you can get through this and enjoy it for what it is. It is not an easy read. It's like reading a history. However, if you're a big fan you learn where Gandalf came from. You learn how Sauron became powerful. You learn about the guy before Sauron. You learn about Galadriel who was one of the oldest beings in Middle-earth. Just learn about so many things, Baron and Luthien. There's just so much good stuff in here. I really did enjoy it. The second thing that I ended up finishing last night was the Ursat's Elevator, which is the sixth series of unfortunate events book. I've done a review video of the first four of these. I'm just kind of picking them up whenever they sound good. I'd had this one kind of hanging around for a little while and I really enjoyed this installment. In this installment, the orphans end up with the guardians named Jerome and Esme Squalor, which is a misnomer. They are not living in squalor. They are like the richest people you can imagine. They have a giant penthouse with gazillions of rooms. You can't actually have that many rooms in the top of a penthouse. That's how rich they are. Very funny. I really enjoyed Jerome's character flaw. He treats the orphans nicely, but not kindly. He doesn't take care of them the way a guardian should. He lets his wife stomp all over them, essentially, and what matters to them, what should matter to a guardian. He just doesn't do justice to these kids. He's afraid of arguing. He's just a great caricature of like a doormat. And Esme, his wife, Esme is the city sixth most important financial advisor. And all she cares about is what is in. I wanted to adopt you from the moment I heard about the fire. Unfortunately, it was impossible. Orphans were out then, but now they're in and how much money she has in her pocketbook, but mostly whatever's in. And we end up meeting Count Olaf at the inn auction that Esme is holding in order to make more money for herself. Olaf is posing as an auctioneer named Gunther. I really did enjoy his disguise in here and in the TV show. There's also a quote in here that I found really interesting that is brought out in the TV show. This is Lemony Snicket talking, the, the guy who narrates the entire series, which is also the author's pseudonym. He calls himself Lemony Snicket. Lemony Snicket. In the TV show, it emphasizes that he's kind of a coward, kind of like Jerome. And in this book, there's a line, and I had never really picked that up when I read the series as a kid. I never really could track who Lemony Snicket was and like anything about his character. But in here it actually does have a line that suggests that the way the TV show interprets him is true. But these three children were far more courageous than I shall ever be. And they paused just for a moment to gather all of this courage up and use it. There's a lot of funny stuff in here. St. Carl's Cathedral, is that really a place? That just doesn't sound like a saint's name to me. It plays a lot on the title of Ursats. It's all over. There's great stuff in here. I do highly recommend this series, kids and adults. Particularly if you have trouble sleeping and you just need something that grabs your attention just enough that your mind doesn't wander, but not so much that your emotions keep you awake. The final total of how much I read, 118 pages. 
that's not too bad. Okay guys, that is all that I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this vlog. Please let me know in the comments if you did. If there's any kind of video that you guys would like to see from me, I really enjoy hearing that from you guys. And if there's anything you want to comment on or talk about, any of the books I talked about or anything else, please let me know in the comments. I love to talk to you guys. Give me a little thumbs up in the corner if you enjoyed this. If you want to see more from me, go ahead and subscribe and hit the little bell icon. That will let you know anytime I make a new video. Thanks so much guys. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.